morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, can I ask you to stand, please, and to get ready to worship the Lord? And I don't know if you can, now I can hear myself. Um, today is a very special Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. So I would like to read the scripture before we start. Uh, it's from Acts chapter 2 that says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mind wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divine tongues of a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with another tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, Father God, thank you, Jesus, because you are the one who promised us that you will come, that you will give us your Holy Spirit, that we will not be alone, but with you forever. Thank you, Father, for giving your Son, and thank you, Jesus, for giving us the Holy Spirit. So I ask you in this moment that you fill us with your fire, that you fill us with your glory, that you fill us with your love and your goodness, Father. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that we may open our hearts to you to get the revelations of who you are, to get the revelations of the love that you have for us, Father. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you touch our hearts this morning, Father, that we can worship you in spirit and truth and with freedom and with understanding that we're giving you our hearts, Father, that we're laying our burdens on top of your feet at the cross, Father. Yes, we give you full authority in this moment to work in our lives and to bring us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. to ask you one thing uh, as we all ask this question uh, ourselves now why why am I, am I here today thank you Jesus why did I come what is the reason I'm here just ask this question
maybe you don't have a reason. Maybe it's just, oh, it's Sunday. It's a church time. We come. Okay, we do songs. We pray. But I want you to think and find the reason why you are here. Is it the joy of the Lord? Is it the joy of salvation that is in your heart? Or is it the burden in your heart that you're struggling with and you need help from heaven? Why you are here? And I want you to tell God why you are here. Because he hears your prayers. He knows what you need. He's a good God. And he can change everything that is wrong in your life. And he can fake, fix anything that, that needs to be fixed. And heal anything that needs to be healed. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. I just want to tell you that we don't need to sing these songs. We don't need to, we don't need to, uh, you know, clap our hands. We don't need to raise our voices. Because God can like touch our hearts in a second. But those songs and those those prayers, those that that music can help us open our hearts before God. That we realize who we are meeting with this morning. We're meeting with the Most High God. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, for your presence in this room. That you always listen to our prayers, Lord. Lord, we bless your name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We bow down before you. Lord, we bow down before. Preparing our hearts for you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Worthy of it all.
moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will see the goodness of God. All my life you have been There's nothing better than 
than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Christ alone. 
righteousness alone. Father, stand before the Jesus. your name sing Yes. 
most beautiful experience in worship is when we forget about ourselves and we focus just on Jesus and God Amen. and give him praise and glory Amen. because not, not our problems will never end as we as we live on this earth we always will struggle with something but God is great and God is still all the same through the storm, he is Lord, as we sang before. Amen. And Lord, we want to sing about your beautiful name. 
Jesus. The name of Jesus. How beautiful is your name, Lord.
Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. you in heaven over and over again and they cry and they shout you your word God. in the holy My yes Jesus show us Lord show us Jesus your face show us Jesus your wonderful face show us Holy Spirit your beautiful face yes Lord your wonderful face, your wonderful face, Holy Spirit, that you come and tore our parts. You bring our lives and set us apart, Jesus. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you bring your love into the room this morning, Father. You're wonderful, your worthy, your glorious Jesus. You're glorious Jesus. You're the one who died for us. You're the lamb, you're the lion. You're the one who sacrificed everything for us. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. You deserve everything from our hearts. Put it out now. Give everything to the Lord. Give whatever is in your heart right now. You're worthy. You're holy, Jesus. You're glorious. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You are holy. You're holy, Jesus. Oh, Holy Jesus, you're sitting on the throne. Are you Lord God? Jesus. Yes, Almighty. you are. You are the mighty God. You are a mighty God. You are a powerful land. God. You are the one who created what the heavens. You are the one who created the earth. You are, you are the one who created us, Jesus. You're holy. You're holy, oh, Jesus. Holy. You are holy. Are holy. you Lord God? Almighty, what is the love? What is the love? Oh, my. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, you are holy, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for blessing us with your presence this morning, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your love poured out upon our hearts, Father, this morning. Thank you, Jesus, because your presence is heaven, heaven and earth, Father. Thank you, Jesus, because we are nothing without you. We are nothing without your presence. We are made of you, and your church is made of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're here with us. You're here upon us, healing our hearts, bringing restoration, and bringing a new life coming out of us, Jesus. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. And we scream and we shout that you're holy. You're glorious, Jesus. You're glorious, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Mo Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Then the Lord saw that he was going over to look. God called him, and within the bush said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing Thank you, Lord. is holy ground. You know what is beautiful? When the veil tore from the top to the bottom, we now have access to come closer to God. There's no need for us to be afraid anymore of the fire of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians, Paul says this, for this reason, I knew before the Father. 
want to invite. If you are fine with that, kneel before the Father. Not before me, not before this worship team, but before your Father in heaven. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. You can come closer. Come closer in prayer of your Father. Do not be afraid of this beautiful presence. We have access. We have access. We have access. Come closer. Come closer this morning. Do not be afraid of the fire of the Holy Spirit. pray that you, being rooted and establishing love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do miserably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work with us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We finders fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart. For you, my master, ready to do your will. Ready to do your will. 
purify my heart let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart let me be as gold pure gold refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy set apart for you lord i choose to be holy set apart for you my master ready to do your will
worthy is the Lamb. You are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Holy are you Lord God Almighty What is the land What is the land you are I can honestly tell you that I tried to finish this song a few times already, but the Holy Spirit has a different plan. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, for your Holy Spirit, that you lead us in worship, that you lead us in prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. nothing that we can do to deserve to deserve a moment like this with you but from the bottom of our hearts we thank you some people cried some people glorify you others kneel in your presence The only thing I want to, yes, we are bold sometimes. I shouldn't be asking you anything after this amazing moment that we had. What I want you, in the name of this church, to ask you is, if someone is still here in this room and has not been touched by you, please, Father, please, Father, touch us. Touch us with your power. Touch us with your spirit. With, with the gentleness of the Holy Spirit.
and don't let us go back to our homes without being changed by you. Yes, because what happened this morning is to change lives. Yes. There is not a place for you to cry and go back the same way that you entered in. There is not a place for you to say glory to Jesus and tomorrow you forget completely about Jesus again. This is a place to have an encounter with Jesus to change our lives forever. Yes. And that's what I ask Good morning, everyone. I want to ask the lights. As you guys know, we are going through the fivefold uh, series of preaching. And um, if you don't know what the fivefold is, Antonio last week explained to us very, very beautifully what the fivefold is. And uh, us, as uh, you know, elders in the church. We understand that the fivefold ministry is the better way for a church to function. Okay? Then you can ask, but this is theory. Yes, there's a bit of theory, but is you know is what bring us together in the spirit to work. Yep. Mike, would you take that? In yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Sorry about that. So what I was saying is, uh, as an elders, we understand that the fivefold is the easiest way for us as a church to grow, okay? And some people also ask us, because all the series are giving a little bit of, uh, you know, questions in the church, mm -hmm. and some people ask us, but wait a second, you guys understood that now, and how was that about before? We, were, we didn't have, like, the Holy Spirit with us. Of course we had. But uh, what we understand is if a church is, for example, you know, le led by only one gift, it's hard to be complete, do you understand what I mean? And it's hard to reach where we want to go, which is a church that loves God, loves people, and loves life, okay? So, in Ephesians chapter 4, you guys know, says in verse 11, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. As Antonio did last week, I think it was beautiful. I'm going to do that again. The apostle, that is the gift that touches all other gifts. Okay? Then, has the prophet, which is the gift that shows us a direction, and I'm going to explain you today what direction is. Okay? Is the prophet. Then, the evangelist, which is the biggest one, in, in terms of, you know, growth that grows the church. Then we have the pastors, which is, you know, married to the church, that loves the church. And the teacher, which is the one that corrects us and brings us back to the Word of God. But then you say, but the teacher is a small one. No, it's just a, a symbol, okay? Try to hold something with only three fingers and let the little one outside, and you're going to see how hard it is. Do you understand what I mean? When you try to hold something and leave the little one outside, it's almost impossible. So that's why the fivefold, the full hand, give us all the, ab the abilities, you know, to work as a church. Okay? So, prophets. I'm going to cover that today. And uh, the prophets, the purpose of prophets, we can find in 1 Corinthians 14. Just get this. Oh, sorry, thank you, bro. Thanks. 
sorry. Sorry about that. Just need a little bit of preparation. Sorry about that, guys. So, first question that I have is, are you guys fine with the understanding of the five-fold ministry? Is that clear? Yeah. Cool. Because if you have any questions, we're going to have some workshops by the end of the, the entire series, okay? And we are going to have some Q&A as well for the church to be able to ask us questions as well, okay? So, but uh, this is, you know, we, we want to give this, exp this explanation because it's going to be clear by the end where we are going, okay? So, on the slide number two, you say is that the purpose in 1 Corinthians 14, that says, but the person who prophesies, he speaks to people for, repeat with me, go there. First one, edification, encouragement, and consolation. That's the reason of the prophecy. And I'm going to speak a, a lot about that today, and you're gonna get, you, you guys are going to grasp this. Edification, encouragement, and consolation okay in the new testament we see some prophets in the old testament there's a lot of prophets prophets that god was talking to them and god was giving the guy the guide the direction to the people of israel but in the new testament also there is some prophets in acts 15 uh, 32 there's about judas and silas that says this they said much to encourage and strength the believers. Okay? Also in Acts 21, it speaks about the four daughters of Philip. Doesn't say what they were doing, but says in there they, they prophesy as well. This is a beautiful thing because it shows to us that God, there's no difference about gender, okay, in this, in this gift. God uses men and God uses also women. Okay, and also there's uh, two prophecies uh, that we're going to go, you know, and explain a little bit about Agabus. He's one of the most, um, there is two prophecies that he, you know, he speaks about. So we know what is, what basically happened. Okay, the other guys there we see, Judas and Silas, just said that they said much to encourage and strengthen believers, but there's nothing else. The four daughters of Philip, the same thing. But with Agabus, there are some uh, context, something that happens, and uh, we are going to go in a few minutes with that. So, but about the prophecies, we need to uh, test the prophecies. And it's not a role to test the prophecies, it's not a role just for the leadership of the church. Okay? It's a role for the entire church. In 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says, two or three prophets should speak. And the others in the church should wait carefully what is said. Okay? It is a job for the entire church to wait, or in order translation, to test what is said. Amen. Okay? So, then, you know, we... Sorry, I want just to say one thing that I, I found uh, about edification, encouragement, and consolation. I went to Google, okay, and I found this about the, you know, the dictionary, basically. In the past was dictionary. I had, like, big old dictionary. Today is Google. You go to Google, and Google says everything to you, right? So, it says this, edification is the moral or intellectual instruction or improvement of someone. That is edification. Encouragement, the action of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. And consolation, the comfort received by a person after a loss or, dis or disappointment. Okay? So these are basically the main uh, aspects of the prophecy. Okay? So, but also, it says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14 is a beautiful chapter because it says a lot about prophecies. It says that it is a self-control role. What this means? The prophet spirits are under the control of the prophet. And I'm going to explain this in a few moments. You're going to see this. Because God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace. Okay? 
So this means that the 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 prophet, the, you know, the pro the prophecy gift, it is a role that enhances the peace in the church, where something is happening that we cannot see with our eyes is when the prophecy comes and it stirs something in the middle of this church to bring peace. Okay? So, and I'm going to explain to you uh, about that in a few moments. You're going to see this. A self-control role. The prophecies of Agabus. In Acts 11, it says this. As Agabus he stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. And this happened during the reign of Claudius, one of the Roman emperors. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to, to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. So in here, you see that Agabus had a message. He shares a message with the church, and the church is able to do something, you know, and to provide for the sisters and brothers in Judea. So you see in there edification, encouragement, and consolation happening. Okay? So, check past. Okay? About the self-control role again, the prophecies of Agabus. In Acts 21, verse 10 to 13 says, Agabus came over to us. He took Paul's belt, tied in his own hands and feet, and said it. The Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the honor of this belt and will hand him over the Gentiles. Okay? When we, the church, heard this, and we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go to Jerusalem. And Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I'm ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. You see a prophecy here of Agabus that instead of bringing peace, it's causing division in the church. Okay? And not only causing division, but Paul has to stand up and say, I'm not going to do what you guys are demanding me to do. That is basically, not, don't go to Jerusalem, Paul. No. I have to go. It is my mission, and I'm ready also to be bound or to die. So you see, the first prophecy of Agabus was very clear, brought peace to the church, and the church was able to work beforehand. The second prophecy just brought a lot of disunity in the church. Okay? So this is what we need to be very careful and you know, pay attention on the prophecies as well. One thing about this second prophecy on Agabus, let's face it, Paul was already, you know, uh, persecuted back in the day, and Agabus was only saying the obvious, because, you know, yeah, he was going to be, you know, uh, one day or another, you know, be uh, took by the, by, by the Romans, and something was going to, to happen to him, okay? So, why prophets are pivotal? As we said in 1 Corinthians, for edification, encouragement, and consolation. But also in Revelation says very clearly, the prophecy always points to Jesus. Because it says in Revelation, worship God, because the testimony about Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If you see a direction, remember what Antonio said last week about the, the finger, direction? The direction of the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, is to direct to Jesus Christ. Because he is the spirit of prophecy. So, is that clear so far? Yeah. Cool. So, if a church is led by prophets, we're going to have edification, encouragement, and consolation. It's all we need, isn't it? Come on, guys. Is all we need, no? <laughs> okay, so what happens with a church that's led by prophets? By the way, the only one that said no that I heard was Antonio, because, you know, the, the gift of evangelistic, come on. <laughs> yeah.
You guys also, you know, could say like, no, no, but anyway. So, processing, yeah. The prophets, they care about delivering the message, but not only following with the people affected by the message. You know, thank God for the pastors, because they go after, you know, the prophet to bring the message, it, the message is like a bomb, boom! I just delivered a message, right? And off I go. Thank God, thank God for the... Eh? <laughs> thank God for the pastors, you know, to take air of the sheep affected by the message. Prophets often uh, do not own, wonder about the many applications of the message delivered. Okay? This is the work of a teacher. Teacher goes there. And he goes in the Word, and he finds many types of translations and many, you know, meanings, and he studies. Prophet doesn't care about that. Prophet is about the message. Boom. That's it. Whatever, you know, as we saw, has to be clear, has to bring peace, edification. Okay, work in the middle of the church with, for peace. That's what, you know, the, the spirit of prophecy is about. But uh, about the applications, no. Don't care about that. Prophets often thinks about now. They're not, you know, concerned about the future of the expansion of the church or now. This is a work of the evangelistic, you know. The prophet is about now. It has to happen now. I don't care about in five years' time or ten years' time what's going to happen, okay? So, the motto of a prophet, a prophet is... Pursue, you know, love and desire for spiritual gifts. And above all, that you may prophesy. This is in 1 Corinthians, Paul saying. You know, above all, that you may prophesy. The person who prophesies he speaks for the people, for edification, encouragement, consolation. And because of the testimony about Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the motto of a prophet. Okay? It's about... To see the church, you know, growing, that the church can look for spiritual gifts and especially the prophecy. And, you know, a church that is able to edify, encourage, and, con and console the people and point always to Jesus. Okay? So, why prophet not, should not be, you know, the primary leader? Uh, as I said, you know, the prophet are not great pastors. They deliver the message and they hardly care about the people. Prophets are not great teachers. You know, they have a message for the season, not then a deep explanation why this is the work of a teacher. The expansion as well. Prophets are not great evangelists. They are bold to talk to the family of believers. You know, there's a not also linguistic in here. Prophets are good to speak to people that are the family of believers, and they speak boldly. Okay? So, the fivefold friction on this. With the teacher, teacher comes with correction, explanation, and the wise, right? The prophet is, that's what you must do, period. You understand what I mean? The message is straight on. And uh, while I was preparing this, I was kind of thinking, you know, correction, explanation, and wise. My God, you know, the prophet is about, I deliver a message in five minutes, and that's it. Why the teacher takes an hour, right? More or less that. The pastor loves and cares. The prophet is, they have to do that. Oh, but, uh, yeah, but you have to have patience with them. Yeah, but we are having patience with them for three months. Come on. <laughs> right? Prophet is about that. The evangelist is about, God loves you. Jesus came to save you. You know? And the prophet is, come on, why they don't believe? You understand what I mean? It has to be like something quick. Okay? So, with this explanation about the prophecy... We cannot forget about the false prophet. Okay? Jesus talked about the false prophet a lot, and I'm going to go a little bit of, on details on this. Jesus in Matthew 24, he says, Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. In Mark 13, Jesus says, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs. And wonders, you see this, prophets performing signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 
You see how powerful is the false prophet. He performs signs and wonders to deceive. Okay? In Matthew 7, Jesus says, Watch out for the false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. So, basically, have to put like a big, you know, uh, lens over to see, because in here, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So, I put some bullet, bullet points in there, you know, to explain uh, a bit about identifying false prophets. A, a prophet will never command what the New Testament does not teach. You can even take notes if you want about that, okay? Because a prophet will never command what, what the New Testament does not teach. Okay, is it works together, always remembering, you know, what Jesus said, always remembering what is the promise of God, okay? A prophet will never make appointments. Like uh, I remember that maybe here in Ireland you guys are blessed about that, but back in Brazil, you know, you have like people that they call themselves prophets and they say, come to my house by five o'clock because by four I have another appointment, okay? Come by five o'clock and I'm going to pray for you. This is not the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, God comes and God speaks the time that he wants. A prophet, and this I think is the hard thing, you know, to say, a prophet must be able to say, the Lord has not told me anything. I have nothing here. People can come and say, but come on, God gave you a word in a season last time. But now I have nothing. You know? Amen. The prophet avoid becoming an object of consumption. He puts all glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Amen. It's not because, oh, I'm here. I arrived here. You guys need to listen to me now. All glory to Jesus. A prophet does not violate the first Corinthians, everything that we are reading, basically. A prophet prophesies Jesus because he is the spirit of all prophecy in Revelation 19, 9. And a prophet, this is, I think it is the bottom line, the prophet knows that love is the higher gift. It is in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8, that says, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there are knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. He knows that love is the highest gift. Then you can ask, okay, we know now about the false prophet. What is the destination of the false prophet? And I tell you, Jesus spoke a lot about the false prophet, and also there's a special destination for the false prophet. Okay? It says in Revelation, sorry, in Matthew, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And your name drive out demons, and your name perform many miracles? You see, there's a lot of supernatural work. Okay? Everything in the name of Jesus. Then I, Jesus, will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you are evildoers. In Revelation 20 it says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet have been thrown. You see what is the, the you know, the group that goes together with the false prophet. Okay, the beast and, you know, the devil. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So just for us to understand, you know, about there is the real prophecy, there is the false prophecy. We're coming to the end and we are going to have a bit of time to, to, respond, to respond as well. The beautiful thing he says, Jesus said in Luke 4, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. It's a hard thing to be a prophet. Because 
people won't understand, and even the people that are close will not accept the prophecy. The prophet is not accept in his hometown. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, don't despise prophecies, but test all things. Hold on to what is good. And uh, to finish, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Okay? So, just to explain everything about, you know, the prophecy. In some churches, you know, prophets are not welcome at all. And that churches that prophets are not welcome at all, often that church, you know, is, suffers a lot to see back to Jesus Christ because the prophet is the, the one with the sharp sword to say to the church, you have to look to Jesus. You have to look to Jesus. And when a church doesn't have that, you know, the church suffers a lot. So it's beautiful when a church has, you know, a prophet working. And many prophets, as we, say, we, 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 we saw in there, could have like two or three coming and talking. Just needs to be ordained. Okay? Other churches that I, I grew up in a place that was a lot of honor for the prophets. A lot of honor. And I saw many, many, many prophecies right, spot on. Spot on. Prophecies that brought peace to the heart. Okay? Prophecies that stirred up the church and brought something beautiful outside of the church. I saw that. But I also saw false prophecies. And because of the church only honor a lot the prophets, we had a big problem because we didn't have the honoring for the teacher. And because of that, many, many, many things were going very, very bad because people were not looking, you know, to the scriptures or to learn from the scriptures. Okay? Sometimes I remember that some, you know, preachers, they had like the gift of teaching. When they came to the church to teach, the church was like, eh, boring, right? This is not the heart that we want for this church. We want, a, we want a church that is eager for the gifts, but is eager to learn, to know that we are going the right way. We are following Jesus Christ. Even if we are going to suffer, because it's biblical, we are going to suffer persecutions and, and many other things, but we are following Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay? So, be eager to prophesy. This is a beautiful thing. And uh, we are going to response. Some of the guys are going to lead the response, but uh, what I want is to pray for us that God can give more and more the gift of prophecy in the people's hearts for his glory only. Okay? Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Father, thank you. Thank you for this message, for enlightening us a bit about the, prophet, the gift of prophecy. And here is this church, people here that want to learn about you, want to get closer to you. And what I want to ask is the Holy Spirit to start touching people's hearts and put in their hearts what we just read. Be eager to prophesy. Be eager to be the one that are pointing out to Jesus Christ, are pointing other people to Jesus are eager to bring a message, a revelation, are eager to pray, are eager to be connected with you. Every morning, by your mercy, you gave us the opportunity to be here by 9.30 in the morning. We want to see this 9.30 meeting filled with people that are eager to have the gift of prophecy. Yes, Father, is what we want. 
a church that is ready to fight the battles. A church that is ready to give glory to you only, Jesus. And here are the hearts of people that have been blessed today by your Holy Spirit. And I know, I know, you will start this service and you're going to end this service and you're going to do something in people's hearts because you're going to give to people the desire to be closer to you this morning. Start moving our hearts, Jesus. Start bringing us closer to you this morning, Jesus. Not only, not only to be an expectator, but to be a doer. To be a doer in your presence. To do not have any shame to speak about you. Amen. To have the boldness to deliver the message. To say that we have to look to you, Jesus, only because you are the author of our faith. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. Prophets are not accepted even in their hometowns. But we want this place, this church, to be a place where they are welcomed. We want to test the prophecies. But we want to see that those prophecies happening for your glory, Jesus. Discover the things from our hearts and change us for your goodness for your glory discover what is inside of our hearts this morning give people the boldness to stand up and to say what do you want to be said in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. To do what only you can. Jesus, have your way in me now. I open up my heart to As we sing this song, it's really important that we understand the context of what we're singing here. We're saying, open up my heart to you, God. For some of you in this church, right, you might think of prophets or prophecy in this very kind of strange mindset i don't know when i grew up i remember like kind of thinking the prophets were a bit strange you know i had this mindset of like you know kind of i don't know strange individuals like john the baptist you know with like big long hair and they live in a desert and they like eat you know locusts and dip them in honey because it helps to eat the locusts you know what i mean and i'm like lord i don't want to be one of them right so let me just demystify prophecy because if we're going to really sing this song, right, we have to sing it with an open heart, right? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you are one of his sheep today, if you're in his flock, you have the ability to prophesy because prophesying is listening to what God says and speaking it out. That's all it is. Let me completely demystify it, okay? Now, a few things. It's not, I hear from God and I say what I want to say. It's, I hear from God and I hear what He wants me to say. Amen? And in that sense, we've had an incredible service today, and I believe that the shepherd is speaking to his sheep today. 
Amen? An awful lot of prophecy happens between you and God. You're hearing from God all the time, hopefully. Amen? Amen. And there are times where God will give you the green button to say, I want you to share what I've shared. It's not just for you. It's for everybody else out there. I've given you something to share with others for their benefit. But the vast majority of it is between you and God where he's speaking to you and where he's touching your heart and he's saying, I want to change something in your life. He's directing you to himself into a greater revelation, into a greater closer walk with him. So please let me demystify that this morning. So as we as a church, as we sit here and as we say, I open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. Do what only you can. That's what prophecy is. It's listening in to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Little tip. If you're not close to Jesus and if you're not really listening to him, probably best not to be prophesying. Get close. That's when he shares. The closer you often find yourself drawing to Jesus, you'll start to, you know, he'll start to speak into your life more because he can trust what he's, he can trust you if that makes sense. But yeah, as we, as we pray, it's so important that each of us learns how to walk in the prophetic. I, I wanted to just to read out a little bit, tiny bit from the book of Acts. He quotes the prophet Joel, <laughs> prophet Joel, and Joel prophesied and he looked forward to the day of Pentecost, which we're coming up to, by the way, we're coming up to the day of Pentecost. And what it says is that a spirit of prophecy is going to be released out on the people, that your old men will and your young men will dream dreams and that you know your sons and your daughters will prophesy right why because it's part of what Jesus did on the cross that we're about to you know as we take the bread and the wine it's one of the things that he desired for us to have is to have a really close relationship where we walk with with God and because we walk close to God we hear things from God when you're close to your friend you share things with your friend right you share deep, intimate things. And when you love someone and you see them and you're, maybe they're going down a road or whatever that they maybe is not a wise road for them, what happens? Out of love, you share something deep with your friend. That's what the prophet's all about. That's what prophesying is all about. Amen? So as we sing this song, we're just going to take maybe a minute just to sing it, just to give you some time to kind of connect in with God. And please, I hope that that's demystified it for some of you, yeah? It's a very normal, natural thing. So go ahead, Rafa. And then we'll take the bread and the wine. I open up my heart to you now. Do what only you can. Jesus, have your way in me now. I open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. I do what only you can. Jesus, have your way me now. I open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. Do what only you can. Jesus, have your way in me now. Into the wind, I 
been desperate for a touch of heaven. Yeah. yeah, just before we take the bread and the wine, just open up your hands if you can. Maybe put your bread and your wine in your chair on the floor for a moment. Just open up your hands, amen? Just going to receive, want to receive, amen? The spirit of prophecy to come over our church. We need to receive that. So if you're open to receiving it, just put your hands out as a kind of like a prophetic sign to say, Lord, I want to receive this. More than anything else, we just want to have a right spirit before we receive this. So we pray right now. Come on, church, pray with me. We pray for humility, Lord God. We pray for humility. This is your work, Lord God. These are your words that we're open to receiving, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that as we receive your word and as we go to speak it, we would speak it with all humility, Lord God. Take us out of everything, Lord God. We think of what John the Baptist said, that we would decrease so that you would increase, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that we would use us as nothing more than signposts for you, Lord God. We are not the destination. We are not the focus. God, help us to point people to you, God. Again, we pray for that humility. Take away any kind of arrogance, ego that goes with that, Lord God. But instead, just make us simple, humble servants in Jesus' name. Father, we pray against fear. We pray against fear. So many times we know, Lord God, you speak to us. You give us a word for a friend or for a colleague or somebody else. But fear holds us back. We pray, Lord God continue to like stir up inside of us like jeremiah said there be a fire burning within me so we pray for that lord god give us that courage but also that clarity to know that this is the word that we need to speak and when we need to speak it god but above all else we ask for love yes, lord. we ask for love yes, lord. now we remember what your word says yes. it's got to be done in a spirit of love yes everything that we do must be done in love and so we pray lord god make us a people who are not just eager to prophesy but eager to love and therefore prophecy is the way that we love lord god we give the word because we love we share words of wisdom and knowledge because we love father when we share it we share it in love jesus name Father, as we go to take your bread and your wine or as a reminder, Lord, of what you did on that cross for us, this is one of the things that you won for us on that cross. You looked forward to this because you knew what a dynamic, powerful tool and weapon it would be for your church yes. to carry this yes. incredible power. Lord, we know the difference that your words made when you were here on the earth. And now, Lord, you're speaking your words through us your church and the power that can make in our families in our marriages in our communities and in our church and so we pray once again that you would give your church a prophetic edge to it lord god that the whole community would stand in fear Amen. and amazement who are these people these simple people who speak such such authority who speak with such power who speak with such precision lord we pray for that again in our church. We're not just for our church, but your church, Lord God. Especially, as Caroline said earlier, in such a season as this, where there's so much uh, lack of truth, where oftentimes lies is called truth. Man, do we, does church need to rise up on a prophetic edge at this time? Oh God, we pray with open hands, raise up, rise up in this church a spirit of prophecy, a people who are close to you, a people who draw near to you, a people who hear from you, a people who can discern what you're doing at this time, a people who are so intimately close with you, God, that they operate and they speak out what you're, as Jesus, as you said, I only speak what I hear my Father in heaven speaking and I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. Father, put some of that in us, Lord God. And God, as we do, Lord, would you reward us with the fruit of seeing many lives changed. Our own families, our own work colleagues, our own schools and college friends looking at us and seeing the difference. Seeing that we speak not just what everyone else speaks, but we speak from a different place. 
in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you for your death on the cross, Lord God. And thank you for this wonderful gift via your Holy Spirit that you've given to us. And please, Lord, help us realize the power, the po this incredible, powerful thing that you've given to us. And help us not to abuse it, but to use it wisely in Jesus' name. Let's take the bread and the wine. Amen. Just to say, uh, to reinforce a simple point there, we will be having uh, workshops coming up on all of the different five gifts because what we believe is we'd like to meet with those of you who feel that you have those giftings so we can encourage you, as it said there, we can encourage you, inspire you. And also, I think this is interesting, it says in the Old Testament, it talks about a school of prophets. In other words, the prophets would actually gather around of each other and sharpen each other and encourage each other in their gifting. And I think that's important for the pastors, important for the teachers, important right across the board. So um, what we would like to maybe do at some point is maybe pray with some of the, those of you who have a, believe you are walking in a prophetic gifting. We'd love to meet with you afterwards just so we can pray together. I know I should be conscious of time as well because we have gone a little bit over. Okay, just gonna put up the announcements. So, until while you're doing that, let me just uh, fly these up here. You want to share really quick? Yep, quick. Come on. Praise God. I just say when the worship was going on, I say, um, God restoring hopes in the house. I see restoration going on. I saw health being restored. I saw hope being restored. I saw God just working, you know, on each and individual that are in the house today. Um, yes, I, I, God, of, I heard him saying that I'm a God of restoration, and I'm here to restore hope. I'm here to restore health. health. I'm res here to restore um, homes as well. So it was just working through each and every one of us. It's a great um, encounter in his presence and today. And that restoration that has happened in our lives is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just continue to clo close your eyes, please. It's very important as well that we learn how to steward the presence of the Lord. And so even when we when we serve the bread and the wine, uh, just don't get distracted, please. Try to sit quietly in your chair when the presence of the Lord is moving, just like right now. And so uh, just this morning, I shared it with the team here. There's a particular person here, and God is about to do a major breakthrough in your life. I'm talking about major. I'm not talking about small things. Okay? And so if that is you, everybody is close. Hold your eyes close right now. If that is you, we're going we're gonna to want to pray for you and declare God's goodness over your life. So if, it's, if somebody in this church or even watching online, you're looking for a major, I'm talking about major, big thing, major breakthrough. I'd like you to stand now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the rest of you, just continue to close your eyes and just start praying for these lovely people. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all of them, Lord. Thank you for your children, your inheritance. I declare gladness and joy over them in Jesus' name. The goodness of the Lord upon your life. I thank you for supernatural breakthrough by the power of the blood in Jesus' name. For it is not by might nor by power, but it is by the Spirit, says the Lord. So I come in agreement right now for those standing 
on the left hand side, on the right hand side of this church, in this sanctuary, in the name of Jesus. We release your blessing on them, Lord. You know the cry in their hearts. You know what they're struggling with. You know what they're asking you for. And so, Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, Lord God, Father, we thank you for testimonies. According to Mark 11, 24, Therefore, I tell you, whatever things you have desire of, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So right now, begin to speak out your blessing. Right now, those of you standing, whatever you have been asking the Lord to do, just tell Him, thank you in advance, Lord. Thank you that you have already done it. Thank you that you have already done it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against all strongholds in Jesus' name. I come against barriers in Jesus' name. All barriers be demolished in Jesus' name over your life. I come against every wall that is stopping you to receive. Every wall is broken now by the power of the blood in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Thank you for your fire, Jesus. In your precious holy name, thank you for your fire right now upon each and all of them. Each and every single one of them standing right now, I pray for your fire to come upon them. In Jesus' name. Lord, I come in agreement with God's prayer in Jesus' name. I ask for an intervention. Release his brother, Lord God, from the spirit of addiction. Set him free in Jesus' name. Jesus, you came to set the captives free. Do it, Lord, in his life. Set him free in Jesus' name. I thank you that you have done it already. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We glorify you. Jesus, you are the Alpha, the Omega. The beginning, the end. The start and the end to every story. To every trouble. To every issue in our life. Lord, you are the clock. Time belongs into your hands. And so we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name. I've also heard something about a person here that has four kids in particular. Four kids. I don't know what's going on with you. I don't know your story and I don't need to know your story. But I'm just here to tell you I'm coming in agreement with what... Uh, my sister just shared her a minute ago. Just want to pray for restoration over your life, hope over your life, the peace of God over your life. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. And if you are here and the Lord is speaking to you, if that is you, we'd like to pray for you as well. Just stand. The rest of you can sit down. Thank you, Lord. Four children. Thank you, Lord God. If that is you, please stand. That's yourself. Praise the Lord. Just stretch your hand towards the Father in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. You love your daughter so much. Hallelujah. That is it. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Father, we release your anointing in Jesus' name over my sister and her family. In the name of Jesus. Flood them with your glory. Thank you for the heavens being poured out. Open heaven over her family, Lord, over her kids. The blessings of the Lord upon her. I pray number six over your life in Jesus' name. Restoration, peace, joy, joy unspeakable. Joy, laughter of the Holy Spirit over your life. Troubles come to an end in Jesus' name. Hardship come to an end in Jesus' name. Seas stop existing from this day on, from this moment on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if some of you are here looking for salvation, maybe this is the first time you're in a church like this and you feel the power of God. You feel the love of Jesus in your heart right now. And you have never been in an environment like this. And you're wondering... What is this all about? 
Well, I'm here to tell you that's the love of Jesus. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit pulling on the strings of your heart, calling you to come home. And so if you're here for the first time, maybe watching or even in this sanctuary, uh, this is not an accident. And the Lord Jesus knew that they will come where you are sitting right here in this church. And it will be such a shame for you to leave the church without accepting Jesus in your heart. And so this is your moment. If you have never accepted Jesus in your heart, thank you, Lord. The Bible says that life is but a vapor. I remember when I was 16. I'm 32 now. Are you ready if Jesus was to come back today? For some of you, are you ready if Jesus was to come tonight? Would you be ready? Would you surrender to him? So this is only for those that have not ever accepted Jesus in their life. If that is you, we'd love to pray for you as well, that you accept Jesus. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and if you confess with your mouth, sorry, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that he was raised from the grave, that he was raised from the dead, there you are. That's your salvation based on those two things. So everybody, just close your eyes. Every single one of you, close your eyes. This is an intimate moment. God wants to save someone here today. Father, I thank you for salvation. I thank you that you died on the cross to set someone free today from their sins. I come against guilt, condemnation. Thank you for the power of the blood that separates us eternally from our sins. And so if that is you today, if you want to receive Jesus in your heart, slip up your hand right now and we'll pray for you. If you want to receive Christ in your heart, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't hesitate. Accept Jesus in your heart today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. This is why it's great to have an evangelist in the house, isn't it? <laughs> Get a response time in there. I love it. Okay, guys, we're going to have some announcements. Um, this isn't actually up on the screen, but just to say, um, just feeling what's kind of going, you know, Nikki's uh, prophetic word there was all about, you know, reconciliation, restoration, hope, and there was a very strong connection to family. And just to say, a few weeks back, we did have a marriage workshop here on one of the Saturday mornings. It was fantastic. Really, I know it's not up on one of the slides because it's, it's a, a ways a bit down the line yet. But I think one of the things that we found very interesting was we prophetically put that on, believing that it was important for us to do so. And kind of, we had the marriage workshop and it sort of seemed to kind of <laughs> stir up a little bit of a hornet's nest in a few people, um, which was good because it, it outlined that, you know, there are marriages within the church that need work, including my own. And just to say, we will be doing another one of those coming up and it looks like it's probably gonna be in around September, October. Um, so can I just, while I'm sort of striking at the iron being hot here, okay? Please, if, if you're needing help in that area, don't just wait till September and October, amen? Please come to us beforehand and say, look, you know, could we have a chat about that? Or is that something that we could work through? And we'll give you some dates as well, because it's really important. I love what Nikki shared earlier on. That's the heart of God, you know? Marriage is a reflection of the Trinity. It's a reflection of who God is. So, next Sunday, we are going to be having our Junior Church Awards. It's going to be on at 1 p.m. after church, so we'll have uh, church, and then quickly go grab your coffees and whatever, and then come back in here, and we'll have the Junior Church Awards. So that's kind of exciting as they're going to come to the end of the year. Again, want to really stress this, lads. We had an amazing time earlier on today, but the Sunday morning prayer is really, you know, it's, it's the the fire, if you like. It's the, the place where the fire starts, amen? We come here at half past nine, we, we just center ourselves, completely set ourselves focused on God, 
and it's where God begins to stir and really move in us. And then you see the results of that on the Sunday morning. So can I encourage you? Please come along. I know some of you are like, oh yeah, but you know, that means two trips into church. Listen, we'll be finished at 10 o'clock. You've got plenty of time to go home, do whatever you need to do, pick up your kids, etc., etc., and be back here as well for 11 o'clock. No hassle with that. Um, yeah, just for all our folks online, if you're connecting with us, you know, just drop us a message. Let us know who you are. Giving, you've been incredible as a church. Do you want to give yourselves a round of applause? Go on. You deserve one. Um, yeah, our church is in an amazing place, you know, compared to where we've ever been uh, previously financially. So that all comes down to what you guys are doing. And it just means that we can go ahead and do the ministry things that we need to do. Amen. And we can do them well. So, okay, okay, yep, yeah. real quick. Sorry, no, um, yeah, just, just since this morning, I wanted to share because we were uh, singing of the goodness of God, and uh, I just wanted to share what God did for me. Um, he, he just um, usually just um, heals me, you know, it's, it's just... Um, since I had problems with my heart and I went through a surgery, it's very hard now to take any medication. And I feel now lately um, after this surgery that um, always I'm attacked uh, with my health in my body. It's always a pain coming and um, things that I, I can't take any medication. So only a few weeks back I was sharing about a pain in my hand and the doctor gave me steroids. And I was afraid to take them because I didn't know how will they react with the heart medication and I prayed about it and God just healed me without taking any medication. And um, last week Antonio was talking about the evangelism and the, th that we are just to go out and share the goodness of God and God's news um, for people and pray with them. And one of the reason we pray is for healing. And about um, uh, six weeks back, um, it started a cough, came over me, really, really uh, persistent and very strong cough. Day, night, I, w I couldn't sleep in the night. And then after this cough, about three weeks, it stopped. Um, I didn't take any medication, it stopped itself. But then the following week, um, the fourth week, um, I, I started having this pain on my side. It was right here. And I remember last Sunday I came to church, This this pain was about almost three weeks, a very bad pain. And um, sometimes I will try to bend or I will try to, to turn my body or, um, you know, uh, from sitting, stand up. And it will come so sudden that I, I couldn't even breathe. And I thought, could be my lungs, could be my kidney, could be a muscle that uh, strained from that cough. I didn't know what it was. But then I... I decided again, I'll pray for it. And I start praying myself. And then I remember last Sunday in church um, when we were taking the bread and the wine, I prayed and I said, as I'm taking the body of Christ, I pray that um, this pain will be gone in Jesus' name. And then I asked Antonio as well, um, just the week before that Sunday, I've been in Antonio's house and I told him about the pain. He prayed for me and nothing happened. When I came to church Sunday, actually the pain was worse. And um, last Wednesday, I went to the hospital and I thought myself on Sunday, okay, I'll pray again and I have to believe. I have faith to believe that God can heal me. And I said, by Wednesday, when I go to the hospital, I don't want to ask the doctors what's going on or um, you know, to, to do any test on me or an anything, because I know God can heal me, because he healed me before so many times. And then um, I asked Antonio again for prayer after his preaching, and he prayed for me, and he asked me to, you know, bend, to turn, to, the pain was gone, and I was like, praise you, Jesus. But then as I walked out of the church and gone home, the pain started again. And I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not letting this fear take over me and telling me that, oh, the pain is coming back, you're not healed, and all this. And then I went to bed again, praying and I said, God, I believe, I believe so strong in your power of healing because I've seen it before when the doctor said I should be dead, you kept me alive. Yeah. And you heal my back, my back was so 
painful. I remember he healed my back. I was suffering with migraines for years and years, and he took the migraine completely. I have no headaches in so many years, and he, he healed my hand with no medication, and I knew he can do it. And Monday morning, I woke up with no pain. And now I can stand. I can stand and I, I can give him glory for his goodness. And I just want to encourage everyone here, please, please believe in his power. Have faith in him because if you have faith, he will heal you. No weapon, no weapon formed against our health shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Woo. Yeah. It's amazing when you see practically how, you know, when we live by faith. Okay, let's stand to our feet. We're going to just say the grace and encourage each other. I don't know about you, but yeah. <laughs> Antonio's like swinging around. He doesn't even know why. <laughs> we'll do a Joanna, yeah? We'll all do a Joanna while we say the grace. Okay, may the grace, Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with you all. Amen. Have an amazing Sunday, guys. And can I just say as well, there are one or two new people today. We have our very first person ever in our church visiting today from Uganda. So make sure you speak to our Ugandan brother down the back. His name is Walter. So look at, lovely to have you all here today, guys. God bless. Grab a tea, a coffee, whatever outside. Love you.